We've just got a few live clips here um, about the varying types of crime around the world. Uh, we believe that if you understand the risk, the chances are you can reduce your vulnerability. So part of the lessons that we're, sh we're talking about here is if you're in certain circumstances, what to do, how to survive, and how to travel safely. First example comes directly from the BBC. Excellent uh, commentary. It's an area near Rio's central train station, popular with locals, tourists and thieves. A local TV station thought they'd investigate. They asked this woman if she was afraid, but before she could really answer, this happened. But the would-be mugger didn't get away with what he wanted. Petty crime is very common in Rio, but catching it on video like this is uncommon. Local people take precautions. I don't take anything with me, just my fare. It's hard to catch them. They are young, but enough is enough. The latest crime statistics show that there was a surge in petty crime in Rio during January, carried out usually by youngsters. There continues to be concerns over the gap between rich and poor in the country. But this example will raise eyebrows so close to the Football World Cup. Alpha Vitel, BBC News. So from a Rio standpoint, minimising what you carry, don't wear watches, don't wear necklaces, don't make yourself an obvious target and be aware all the time. Uh, fairly basic. What we're moving on now from uh, the Rio streets is to a uh, scene of a carjacking in Russia. This is extreme violence and really the only tool you can rely on, on is being passive. What we see here is an unfolding of a very, very violent carjacking that took place in Russia. We're not exactly sure what the motives were. You see the car pull it up at the top that has the carjackers in it. And they come with tremendous amount of violence. Heavy weapons on the left, you see an AK-47. Uh, these guys are out of control when they're trying to take control of the vehicle. Watch as the weapon fires negligently into the floor. Bang, there it goes. And the problem with that is it could as easily been in the vehicle as out of the vehicle. The only thing we can recommend in situations like this is keep your head down. Try and survive it. To resist these types of individuals is absolutely futile. They have no compunction about killing people and the slightest bit of resistance will result in them killing you and killing those that you are with. So this is the type of situation you could meet in places all over the world. So one danger that everybody faces when they travel abroad, this is a scene in Mexico, this is the cartel uh, boss snorting cocaine in the front of his truck uh, where they're blocking off a road with a substantial amount of vehicles. One of the things I want people to think about is when you come up against guys like this, um, they're hyped up on if not um, drugs, alcohol, natural drugs, and they're certainly hyped up in terms of adrenaline. Uh, this particular gang, and there's a lot of them, there's probably about 20 vehicles involved here. They roll into town and they literally take over this junction. So unfortunately, when they block the road off, somebody's going to drive into it. It's a pretty well situated, or what we say, sighted uh, roadblock. Here come the cars now. You look at the number of them. I mean, they love their 4x4s. And then some poor guy gets up early. He's probably feeling half asleep, and he's trundling off to his factory or to his place of work. And he drives around the bend and into this type of situation. Uh, I wouldn't recommend at this stage somebody trying to reverse away from that particular situation because these guys have all got AK-47s and all sorts of uh, heavyweight uh, uh, weapons and ammunition and they won't hesitate to open fire. This group are actually establishing a base so they can attack across the field to the right but you could get caught up in this. Even though the music is uh, very annoying, uh, I don't know why they put it on there, but uh, 
the important lesson here is if you look at the security guard in the center, the white uh, blouse, female security officer, just chatting with the locals, and out of the left comes a chap, pulls a gun out, and pulls it on the guard and the people that they're talking to. What's important is here to view here is how compliant everybody is instantly. No resistance, no arguing, no, oh my god, what's happening? Because it's at those stages that you're likely to get yourself killed. These locals are well versed enough in the tactics of the local criminals to say, oh, here we go, let's get down, let's, let's uh, play along. No resistance, no heroics. These guys are extremely violent and are quite happy to carry out their violence against uh, fellow countrymen, visitors, whatever. So if you happen to be in a local store in some part of the world and suddenly a gunman or gunmen appear, which is the case here, they literally take over the store. No rush, no panic. They're going to wander around, pick what they want. They're going to make sure that the people stay compliant. Here the chap goes, okay, well, I don't want you there. I'm going to push you in between the, uh, the counters, keep you out the way. Everybody's complying, everybody's saying, okay, get on with it, no problem there. What you don't want to do is to react either hysterically, uh, bravely, follow the lead of the locals. They know how to survive, they've lived it all their life, they know the characters they're up against, and you have to try and mirror that reaction. It's not something that uh, typically you'll be used to, but learn quick and learn to survive. And this is a great example of what we're talking about in this store in South Africa. English, it's very, very simple, okay? Baby, baby, listen. You call the company. You call Peter Lewison and tell them. Tell them to pay or they are going to kill us. All right?